We are fortunate to have support from the City of Seattle and Issaquah Schools Foundation to advance the idea of ending mental illness stigma and provide a voice to youth. My name is Kate Vrymoot. I'm the curator of the Art and Social Change exhibit, The Incredible Intensity of Just Being Human. And I got involved in the project in uh, 2013. June Sekiguchi curated a show with myself and Holly Ballard Martz. What they didn't know, but I knew, and we kind of talked to each other because we were so, I was so stigmatized by mental illness, but that we all have children diagnosed with some kind of mental health issue. And at the opening of that exhibit, June looked at the two of us and said, oh, I know what we all have in common. The three of us have kids with mental illness. When we all discovered that, it was just a kind of instantaneous bonding. And we immediately knew we had to start talking about it openly, that there was such stigma involved, not just for, for the person with mental illness, but for the entire family. The time is right now um, for us to just talk, everybody talk about this with all of your communities. We knew that we wanted to then make a stand and voice what our experience was and um, share with other people knowing that for us it empowered us to, uh, to speak about it. I didn't know how to be quiet about it. I didn't know how to pretend everything was okay. I just felt it was really important not to be ashamed of what was going on in my family and what my daughter was struggling with. So my approach was if this is an exhibit aimed at ending the stigma of mental illness, we couldn't merely hang the work on the wall and consider it done. That we had to find a way to involve a horizontal audience. People who weren't the regular people who went to art shows, but people who were actually really affected by this. The biggest purpose of this exhibit is to try to destigmatize mental illness. And the way that we do that, at least from my perspective, is by talking about it, by sharing our stories, by bringing it out into the open. So my daughter Delaney was just going into her senior year of high school, she started having massive panic attacks and she didn't want me to leave the room, let alone the house. Three weeks before her high school graduation, she attempted suicide for the first time. In Washington state, suicide is the second leading cause of death for youth. 90% of people who commit suicide are suffering from a diagnosable mental illness at the time of their death. She didn't have any long-term physical effects of that overdose. But it was still incredibly traumatic, as you can only imagine. So if we can find those people and get them into care, I mean, these are huge numbers of, of lives that are affected by deaths by suicide. Two and a half months into her first semester, she attempted suicide the second time. Helping a loved one, helping your child or, or a parent or a sibling or a spouse get help when they're in crises is so difficult because of the stigma. I definitely think that stigma, it, it affects access, it affects people's overall treatment. I was the one that was most, I think, uh, cloistered, hidden about our experience wanting to protect my, my son and our family. People aren't, you know, rallying around families if they're disclosing that there's some mental health problems. They're not, you know, bringing you freezer dinners and, and helping you organize vigils. Um, it's kind of in the closet still. Breaking through the stigma it was a process of um, community, like building community with these artists. They gave me the strength to be able to speak about it. And I've seen it in my son and he has spoken very frankly about his experiences. It's empowered him. So there's been nothing but good uh, about coming out to speak. It's going to take people, some brave people who want to be trailblazers, I think, that are not afraid to talk about it. Um, for me, it's very obviously sharing our stories because if we don't talk about how it's impacting our lives and our loved ones' lives, it stays in the shadows and the stigma keeps being perpetuated. So Through the power of the community of these women, um, I felt like, yeah, I'm not going to be part of the problem. I'm going to stand up and be part of the uh, solution of community and destigmatizing mental illness. My personal journey through the exhibit is from the first time we exhibited, it was frightening. It was hard to do. And when we put the work up, 
people started contacting me and telling me their personal stories and telling me in a way that was so candid and free of shame. Some of the topics I'm going to be talking about tonight can be really difficult for people to hear. Um, so if you feel overwhelmed or uncomfortable, please feel free to uh, just get up and, and, and go if you need to. And at first there was only one. <laughs> and she looked kind of lonely. So she needed another one. Yeah. I've always been an artist, but it became my therapy. It became a way of working through the grief and the stigma of mental illness. What we can do from this moment forward is to uh, support each other and speak uh, loudly and clearly about um, the effort to destigmatize mental illness. It's very powerful. I'm not going to be quiet about this. This is not something we have to hide. Fall wrist. These words were emblazoned on the neon plastic band encircling my daughter's wrist. Was the irony of this warning lost on everyone but me? The paramedics who forced liquid charcoal down her throat? The ER doctor attaching multiple monitors? The security guard stationed in her room? Couldn't they see the fall, or was it a stumble-tumble, headfirst dive into the abyss had already taken place? A sinkhole had opened up and swallowed her whole. Fall risk. Empty, hollow, too little, too late. No early warning system in place for the emotional tsunami sweeping away the landscape. All the familiar landmarks used to navigate life removed. Fall risk. Should these words be tattooed on her wrist, a permanent medic alert bracelet apprising the world at large of my firstborn's predisposition to slipping into the crevasse, or maybe stitched across the chest of her entire wardrobe, so no confusion would remain regarding her fragility, despite the persona she might wear to hide her pain. Perhaps I should pack a parachute and strap it onto her, across her back, a lightweight silken fabric to be deployed when the mighty weight of sadness pulls her below the surface. A fluttering translucent wisp woven from love, acceptance, hope. Hope to keep her aloft, to keep me aloft, the one who loves her like no other, who cannot bear the thought of a fall without a subsequent resurgence, a fall without a return to the light. Fall risk, wrap a neon plastic band emblazoned with these words around my wrist, declaring my vulnerability, for I am at risk of falling too. That's beautiful. Wow.